Maybe it will all even itself out. Joseph, you probably know more than I do about matters like that, but go Blazers. Go Blazers. Go sports. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm a Bulls fan, but I do enjoy the Blazers <laughs> That's as true. Well. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people probably want to stay inside tonight, I'm thinking, with all this weather and watch some basketball. It's just soggy outside. I think it's a good idea to maybe be inside just a little bit. At least try to stay off the roads as much as you can because you may have uh, some travel issues where it's just, you know, there's water, it's slick out there, and if you're going to the gorge, the mountains is a completely different story. I do want to talk about some of the winter weather alerts that are out there. We have a winter storm warning here extending through areas of Washington and down through the Cascades. That's in pink and out towards the blues and the Wallawas there from the mountains into the east. And then we have the winter weather advisories kind of scattered across areas of the state. I'll zoom on in. You can see the winter storm warning out towards uh, Baker County just to the north there between Pendleton and Baker City where I-84 has been having some issues. Uh, that is until Thursday at noon, but what I really want to discuss is right around areas of Hood River County extending through the gorge here. There's a winter weather advisory till Thursday at 4 a.m., but I'm watching that section of the state with a little more attention because we may have some freezing rain and some ice which can always cause some issues with traveling and power. All right, here's what we have going on. High pressure down here, but it's driving all this moisture right over the top of it. We're going to have another atmospheric river setting on up. That's just a plume of moisture that's uh, a little more heavy than maybe just a passerby system. This is going to be slower. It's going to take some time to leave, and, uh, and a result of that's going to probably be some issues. That's why we had that flood watch that I was explaining earlier in the show. Here it is. Here's another way to look at it. So we have the high pressure right here. There's that stream of moisture that's going right over the top of it, kind of settles in right here in the Pacific Northwest. That's going to continue to just leave us with a lot of rain from pretty much this point all the way through to uh, Friday. Thursday we'll have some dry time kind of working in uh, maybe portions of the afternoon so that may help but it's going to be pretty wet out there. This is the temperatures aloft. Think about 5,000 feet which is about that elevation of government camp. We're watching this because it shows us when air is moving on in. We call that infection, warmer air or colder air. This is the colder air right here. This is all going to kind of scoot out of the way as we head into tonight which is telling us there's some warmer air on the way above our heads. But that can cause some issues. Sometimes it's not always pretty when we get that warmer air because we're seeing the cold temperatures at the surface. And so if we get any sort of moisture heading into areas of the gorge, it could lead to maybe some ice accumulating because it's freezing rain. The surface is cold and it freezes on contact. So watch what happens through Hood River County, the upper areas there. Uh, yeah, ice accumulation all the way into tomorrow morning. It's a pretty hefty area of um, ice. So this is something that we'll keep it on tonight. It is possible, it is possible that we stay warm enough at the surface and we just see rain, uh, which will be very helpful for the commute. So yes, Natasha's in later. We'll keep you updated and Kelly tomorrow morning. There's Portland, there's the Dalles, there's Mount Hood Meadows, and there's Lincoln City. Not even a bit of blue sky out there right now. Futurecast keeps us nice and rainy. Here's 6 p.m. Just snow at that point in time. It's saying, hey, the cold air is here. And then there's that transition to maybe that wintry mix by the time we get to uh, 10, 11 p.m. tonight. And it stays that way for a few hours before it transitions all the way to maybe some rain. But you can see by 6 a.m. still projecting maybe that wintry mix. And that's why we're concerned for that freezing rain. And I showed you that ice accumulation total or projection. We get to Thursday and Friday. It's still very wet out there. So we'll keep an eye on the rivers. This is when we may have some flooding problems over the course of Thursday and into Friday. Okay, so the, so the weekend, I'm hoping for at least some dry time. So we got through all of that information. Let me show you the weekend because if you're planning to be outside or we just need to kind of rebound from all the rain, I think Saturday and Sunday is a good day to do it. But Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we know what's going to happen there. It's going to be wet. And uh, tonight, right around midnight, we actually might get close to 50 degrees. So we'll see what happens. Notice that our overnight temperature is actually warmer than our afternoon temperature. That's that warm front coming in. All right, 45 degrees on Saturday. Sunday at 46, nice, dry, sunny day. I think Monday and Tuesday we stay pretty dry as well, Jenny. So we just okay. got to get through the next couple of days, but they're yeah. going to be um, they're going to be pretty tough. We we need a little dry stretch. It's been a bit much, Joseph. Yes, we sure do. Yeah, <laughs> two days would be nice. Maybe we could get three or four. Okay. All right. We'll be right back with more news and weather. Stick around.